Hello and welcome along to the Weather Studio Live. It's the 17th of March, St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I'm Alex Deakin. I'm Ada McGiven, broadcasting as usual from Met Office HQ in Exeter. We're here to answer all your comments and queries about the weather and give you a general idea of what's happening over the next few days, if not a bit longer, with the weather patterns. Yes, we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. If you're new to us, welcome along. Thanks for coming along. You can send us in your questions. We will try and answer as many as we can during the show. Uh, please do stick to weather. However, that is our expertise. That is what we are talking about. We'll talk about the UK weather for the next few days, uh, a bit further ahead when it's turning drier, but also colder. And uh, we're going to have our heads in the clouds. For a little section of the show as well. Yeah, looking forward to that. First of all, actually, some really spectacular cloud pictures and, and weather pictures that have been sent in to us recently. Uh, starting off with some global pictures, uh, impressive thunderstorms in different parts of the world. Yeah, some of these taken last week, but uh, hail storms here, absolutely uh, impressive. Looks like snow, doesn't it? But this was just a, a huge hail storm in Bogota uh, last week, and uh, they had some, some actual huge, huge individual cells didn't they these people obviously again looks like they're shoveling snow but this is just in the streets of Bogota they often get thunderstorms and hail is not that unusual but this kind of size hail uh, is pretty unusual wherever you are damaging hail if that fell on your head or yeah. it's gonna it's gonna hurt it could do some serious damage and of course uh, damage cars infrastructure as well but just uh, that was images from last week from Bogota powerful storms there and uh, an incredible thunderstorm here just take a look at this video just looping there, this incredible lightning bolt. Beautiful shot there, beautiful shot. So that was in Amman again. These uh, taken taken last week. They're just incredible. Just just captured it just right. I think yeah. it's on a it's either a GIF is it or an Instagram um, boomerang shot there. But you could just watch that all day, couldn't you? I know. Absolutely you gorgeous. That's your screensaver again. The power of mate. Maybe it's just us, but uh, I could. Anyway. The weather's uh, not been quite as dramatic in the UK, but yesterday we had all sorts of different weather across the country. A real divide. Mm. For example, this was last night in Stir. Just pouring it down with rainfall there. Graham Fraser, thank you very much for that picture as a close-up of Oof. the absolutely It's amazing that shot there, hasn't it? You've got there, it must be on a long exposure, is it? Yeah, yeah, it really gives you the sense of the heavy rain, doesn't it? Yeah. But a real contrast with uh, Kew Gardens. <gasps> Lovely spring-like picture there. Uh, beautiful images of blossom, signs of spring. Kew actually holding the current Temperature of the year so far, warmest day of the year so far recorded in Q 16.5, but we might beat that tonight. We're going to get Ooh, close to some places, yeah. already up into the low teens, and we might get up to 16 degrees in a few places today. But that contrast persists, doesn't it, with the mm. weather across mm. the UK. Some places seeing similar images to this, but there is some wet weather to come as well in the next few days. Um, any questions coming in, Aidan? Thank you. Do keep them coming in. We'll try and answer, as I said, as many as we can during the course of the programme. Ben Spice on YouTube talking of warmth. He says it's really warm in Dover at the moment, showing 16 degrees mm -hmm. on his thermometer. Uh, clear skies, any sign of it becoming warmer? Uh, well, <laughs> no, not, not right <laughs> now. No, make the most of that the, 16 think, Celsius. Think, think the opposite of warmer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, make the most of today. And tomorrow in Dover, actually, tomorrow will also be, it might not be 16, and it might be a little cloudier, mm. but uh, tomorrow still in Dover, the, the, the mild weather persists, but it is turning colder. Elsewhere, it'll start to change tomorrow, and then, yeah, the outlook, as we'll see in a moment, is much colder conditions, uh, particularly noticeable at night. Widespread nighttime frost becoming a big thing. Lisa Glaze on Facebook, we need some gardening weather for those of us stuck at home. I'm sure that will be the thoughts uh, from many people. Um, not great weather for gardening heading into the weekend, uh, if, you're, if you're not hoping for frosts, that is. Well, actually, that's a key point, actually. Mm. Don't put any, if you, if you are gardening this week, don't put any delicate plants out at the moment because the frosts are coming back. So seriously, yeah, don't I'm be selling them all at the moment as well as uh, seedlings. As you can tell, I'm a gardening expert, but, um, but yeah, don't put any delicate plants out at the moment because yes, it does look lovely out there at the moment across parts of the south and it is quite mild, but the frosts are returning, so just be aware of that. Gordon Bedford on oh. Facebook, you like this. Good afternoon. When is the Equilux and the Vernal Equinox, of course? <laughs> the Equilux is today yeah, and the Equinox is on Friday. And there's a big difference. Well, a small difference. Go on then, you explain it. 
the equinox, of course, is where the centre of the sun crosses the celestial equator or something like See, that. The, hey, that doesn't make any something sense. Like that's, that. what, that's why I don't like the description, because <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. No, but it, it's essentially when the sun crosses the equator. So uh, during the winter, the sun is overhead in the no southern hemisphere, and then it crosses the equator on its journey north uh, to be overhead in the northern hemisphere uh, during the northern hemisphere summer. In the middle you've got the equinox, that's where it crosses the equator. But that's not necessarily, it's surprising because equinox of course means equal nights. It's not the actual day where you get equal day and night because of various uh, effects. For example, one of them is the fact that we measure sunrise and sunset for the top of the yeah, sun, not the, the middle bit, yeah. of the sun. And so that adds on a bit of daylight, a bit of extra daylight. And that means that you tend to get the actual equal day, equal night, a couple of days before the equinox, which is called the equilux. And the curvature. There's two main factors. The fact that we measure the sunrise and sunset at the top of the sun, and there's the fact that the Earth's curvature actually bends the sun. You actually start seeing light or seeing the sun come up mm. before it actually does come up as well. So the equilux, when the time of light, the amount of daylight compared to nighttime, is before in spring and after in autumn. It means that summer is ever so slightly yeah, longer than longer. winter. So it's good. It's actually mm. a good thing. Uh, it means that nights are shorter than days from tomorrow, just a little bit before the actual equinox. Uh, Chris Proto on Facebook, does Glow see, uh, see a SSW or is it final warming as shown by other models? Well, it's interesting, yeah, there's um, our colleague Marco Patani has been looking at this quite a lot. Um, the SSW and um, Southern Stratospheric Warming and does it actually, is actually, will it actually impact the UK weather? Is it just the, um, uh, the polar vortex shutting down for mm. the spring as well? Mm. So I think um, that's more likely it's just going to shut down earlier because of Southern Stratospheric Warming, but it doesn't sign no signs of that actually then having a knock-on effect and bringing us an easterly, although we are going to see an yeah. easterly later this week, but those two things are not related because there's, there's always at least a two, sometimes a three-week gap between those two things happening. Yeah. Uh, last week, this is Carl Martin on Facebook, last week he forecast good weather for this week. Apart from Monday, what happened? Well, Carl, there is good weather on its way. Bear with us. A uh, couple of days of um, some rain, next couple of days. But then high pressure is arriving later this week. We'll have more on that in a moment. Yeah, the front, the high pressure is essentially pressure is higher, but this front coming south has added a bit of a complication, hasn't it, this week? It's not quite as clear cut, disappointing the way this weather front's come in and kind of brought more cloud and, and a bit more rain around. The high pressure is still on its way and will still be dominant across the UK come the weekend. But actually, if you're after warmth uh, and sunshine, you're going to be in for a bit of a shock because although high pressure is moving in, it is turning drier, it ain't turning warmer, it's going to be turning colder both by day, particularly as the winds pick up, and, and especially at night with, uh, as already discussed, uh, widespread frost coming back. In fact, let's take a look at the weather for the next couple of days, shall we? Well, that's the weather front, actually, that you were talking about, so let's play it forward. So this is the last 24 hours of weather. We've got a swirling area of low pressure heading towards Iceland there, and the uh, satellite image there is, is showing an area of cloud drifting its way southwards, and then... Here we go, pause it there. The weather front having drifted southwards after a wet day, we saw that rainfall picture from Stirling earlier. After the wet day yesterday across Scotland and Northern Ireland, the rain sank south, now it's pushing north again for the rest of Tuesday. So another wet day to come for parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland, parts of Northern England as well as that weather front moves in. So this is the uh, weather for the rest of uh, Tuesday, essentially this is five o'clock today and you can see the rainfall really setting in across much of Scotland away from the far north and northeast Northern Ireland and the far north of England and some heavy rainfall some unpleasant weather with strong winds through the Irish Sea into the Solway Firth and some snow above what 400 meters over um, uh, yeah across the northern Scotland, Scotland yeah lower, for, uh, through the central belt and further south uh, the snow levels higher than that so uh, they're not particularly worried about snow. Might be a bit icy as the wet weather clears first thing in the morning. But that's the key thing, isn't it? Cloud. Compared mm. to yesterday, yeah. it was an absolute belter of a day, if you like, blue sky for England and Wales. But today, it's actually milder, 
slightly warmer air because we're now in the warm sector, but it is an awful lot uh, cloudier. But some breaks in the cloud have got mm. this southwesterly wind. So if you live to the northeast of hills, then the hills dry the air out and you get a, you get a few breaks in the cloud and parts of the east, particularly the southeast of England, uh, fine. Yeah, the little pockets there. South, South Yorkshire. Of England. Um, There'll be some pockets of really warm air and temperatures of 15, 16, perhaps 17. So it's coming close to the warmest day of the year so far. It will be touch and go. Uh, but yeah, it's it's mild for England and Wales, but cold for Scotland and Northern Ireland. Under and that should rain. mention those winds as well, because as they squeeze together again, the mountains having an effect here. Some some lee waves, and we get those strong gusts, particularly to the east of the Pennines uh, later on this afternoon and into the evening. Now overnight, the weather front, it's a repeat of yesterday essentially, the weather front leaves Scotland and Northern Ireland and it drifts south into England and Wales, but it peters out as it moves south. Um, not everywhere, it'll still be quite wet across Wales, particularly West Wales over the higher ground. You can see it slows down as well, so yeah, not a great deal of rainfall for southern counties of England. It looks mainly like it's going to avoid South East England, East Anglia, but uh, this is how it starts off. Wednesday, a lot of cloud, some damp weather for much of England and Wales, and brighter skies for Scotland and Northern Ireland, but we're into colder air here. Yeah, the temperature, that weather from marking that boundary between, again, it'll be mild ahead of it, but only really across the far south, whereas further north, much colder air coming in. Yeah, uh, it's not going to be quite as mild on uh, Wednesday afternoon across England and Wales. The weather front does peter out, so it's not going to bring a lot of wet weather for southern counties of England when it moves in. Most of the country ends up behind that weather front in the clearer, colder air, some sunshine later Wednesday and into Thursday. Let's put the cloud back on. You can see the, the back edge of that cloud. This is four o'clock on Wednesday. Plenty of bright weather there for Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England. But this is a tricky feature because it's mm. slowing down and it could just linger like an unwanted guest across <laughs> southern counties of England really through Thursday, perhaps even into Friday. It's because it's kind of just slowing down, isn't it? It could slow down and stop there, as um, our model wants it yep. to, but some other computer models do want it to slow down and stop, but just, what, 50 miles, 70 miles further north, and that will just make, just will shunt the cloud, and because it's gonna, particularly, if you're just stuck under that weather front, it's gonna be gray and rain all day, that does make a massive difference as to where it's, it's, it's not moving through, it's aligned with the jet, and it's just gonna kind of grind to a halt. So this is what we expect it to be from the, the UK model across parts of the south, but it could just be a little bit further north affecting parts of South Wales. So still the jury's out a little bit on Thursday, as is often the case with mm. these wriggling, waving you can, you can weather You can see fronts. it, just, just wriggling there. And it's not a great difference in the grand scheme of things. It's just uh, you know, 30, 50 miles or so in the position of that weather front, but it will make a huge difference in terms of South Wales, for example, whether you get a sunny day on Thursday or whether you get a cloudy day, or whether there'll even be some rainfall. And same goes for Friday, because although we've got this area of high pressure nudging in across most of the UK by this stage, so many places just settling down, turning sunny, if rather chilly, with some frosty nights, by Friday, that weather front is still lurking along the channel and, uh, yeah, it could just throw up some patchy rain and drizzle. Not impactful rain, just the kind of rain that might just spoil your day on Friday. If you're in the southwest, southern counties of England, South Wales possibly as well. So, it's yeah, we're just watching the behaviour of this weather front and trying to pin down exactly where it's going to... It's one of those ones where we, yeah, we may not know the, the real details until 24 hours before it, before it kind of happens. But the, the main thing is look at that big chunky, big fat area of high pressure that's moving in, but it's moving in with the colder air. So it's bringing colder air. I mean, there's enough welly now in the sun to, to lift the temperatures by day. So if mm. you've get some, got some sunshine by day, it's not going to feel particularly cold if the winds are light. But it's, the, it's at night with that colder air that nights are still long enough, almost as long as the days, uh, for it to turn really quite cold and uh, some hard frosts on the way, particularly into the weekend. The interesting thing is, is that uh, Friday's the first, Friday's the equinox, first day of astronomical spring, and it could be that we're going to start to see the coldest air mass of the winter. By air mass, I mean the character of the air, where that's come from. It's come from the north and then via the east. And even though the sun will warm up the lowest layers, so it might not necessarily feel, then there'll be a lot of sunshine by Saturday, it might not necessarily feel that warm, in the, that cold in the sun. Essentially, the character of the air is really cold, and if that arrived in January or February, we'd be talking about really, really low temperatures and, and uh, snow and, and that sort of thing. As it is, 
we could expect frosty nights and still a looking, chill in the wind. Still season. looking at minus 10 in Scotland, possibly mm. on Saturday morning. Um, the record for March, interesting, I looked this up the other day, it's been like minus 20 as the record, and that was recorded on like the 14th or something. Oh. It wasn't like the 1st of March, as you might expect. Yeah. Interesting stuff. That is interesting, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> interesting stuff. Right. And the winds are also key as well. I'm pointing out the position and the shape of the high, the ice are squeezing together there across the south, means there will actually be a, a strengthening wind, and that's going to be more and more of a feature of the weather as we go into the weekend as well, because if it's, if it's windy, it's cold wind, that's going to really bring a chill. Yeah, uh, time to refer to Charles Dickens, of course, for that uh, type of weather where he said it was one of those March days when the sun shone hot and the wind blew cold. Winter in the shade, summer in the sun, or something like that. I'm just paraphrasing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Paraphrasing Dick. Your classic. Uh, Fantastic. Cold wind, hot sun. Weekend. Uh, Thomas Hapgood on YouTube. Where is Claire? Well, she is. Oh, she's also replied. She's doing the 10 day trend. She Ooh. will be doing the 10 day trends tomorrow. 10 day trend lovers. Uh, she doesn't get to do it very often. She's very excited, but she is doing the 10 day trends tomorrow and she will be around tomorrow, but she's not in today. Uh, Victoria Waller on Facebook. Happy St. Patrick's Day to all at the Met Office. Thank you, Victoria. Happy uh, St. Patrick's Day to all you guys as well. Well, uh, Sam Southall on YouTube, what is the SSW? Can you explain it? Sam, well, I haven't really got the time today. We've talked about it before on quite a few shows. You can go back. Is there an is There, there a, is an explainer. An explainer. If you, if you, you go. Google Med Office uh, Southern Stratospheric Warming, you'll probably see our video. It comes up in our Learn About Weather YouTube channel. And that is a thorough explanation of it. It's five minutes long, nice animated video. Um, illustrated by um, Mark Machen, who works with us upstairs. So it's a, a lovely video to watch, and it uh, hopefully will help to explain it for you. Mark Courtney on Facebook, suddenly the weather doesn't matter so much. You're quite right, Mark. There are obviously bigger things going on around the world. But, you know, we still have to kind of get on with things. The weather will still be happening, and we're just trying to offer a bit of... Uh, respite if you want, so something to something to engage with and uh, we do like getting your questions in. The weather is still happening outside so we'll still be reporting on that uh, to try and keep things as normal as we can. But you're quite right, there are bigger things to worry about and concern ourselves with. However, it may be that a few of you are spending a bit more time looking out the window, for example, looking at the clouds and perhaps wondering what on earth are all those clouds called? Yes, so we're going to do a new feature Three minute Mets. We've not done this before, so anything could We've happen. We've not even practiced it. <laughs> <laughs> I am actually going to literally set a, a set of uh -oh. timer, though. Uh -oh. So we, we've got three minutes to describe um, a certain part of meteorology. And this week, we're going to start with clouds so that you will have a little bit of uh, something to look at mm. when you're looking up in the sky. Uh, just a bit of cloud spotting knowledge, perhaps, hopefully, uh, if we give you the basics, which we're going to do in three minutes. Let's go for it. Starting now. Yep. Welcome to Three Minutes Met. Do you know your nimbostratus from your cumulonimbus? Did you know there are 10 main cloud types, all with different names, and these names come from Latin? After the next three minutes, hopefully you'll be able to name all these clouds, but it's not as complicated as it might first seem. Now, the first person who named the clouds, or not the first person, but the, the cloud names have come from Luke Howard, this gentleman here. He was a British chemist and amateur meteorologist, and in 1803 he wrote a paper in which he named the clouds, basing those names on Latin words. So there's three main types. That he looked out the he looked out at the sky. I think he was on a train at the time. He looked out, looked at the sky, and basically started categorizing them into these three main different types, different flavors of cloud, if you like. Stratus, layer form cloud. Cumulus, they're the fluffy, they're the heaped ones. Cumulo meaning heaped, uh, but cumulus, uh, that's where that comes from. And cirrus, the sort of hair, looks like horse hair, horse hairs, as they're often called. Um, so they're the three main different types that he categorise mm. them into, but then you got a bit more complicated and added well, the, a couple of extra. The beauty of his system is that you've not just got these names, but you can combine them. So you can combine cirrus with stratus to give you cirrostratus, or cumulus with stratus to give you stratocumulus. And the addition of just two more words to learn, alto meaning high, and nimbus, which technically means dark cloud, but we use it to refer to rainy clouds. So you know if it's got a nimbus in it, it's going to be raining. 
So how do we combine those together to give you 10 main clouds? It's quite straightforward, really. We've talked about the cumulus fluffy clouds. We've talked about the stratus, the gray uniform layer clouds, which you often get on a drizzly sort of day. But sometimes you'll have a combination of both of those and you would call that stratocumulus. So a layer of bumpy clouds. And then you've got cumulonimbus, so that's a cumulus cloud, a fluffy one, but also a rain-bearing cloud. So cumulonimbus, as you probably know, they're the big thunderstorm clouds. So if you combine cumulus with nimbus, then you get cumulonimbus. And of course, stratus and nimbus, that's uh, really horrible weather. That's nimbostratus, just a big heap of cloud, a big layer of cloud that gives you persistent wet weather. And then the high clouds, so cirrus is the, is the most famous of all the high clouds, but you can combine that if you've got like a, a layer, a really thin layer of high cloud, that can be cirrus stratus. But if it's also lumpy and bumpy high up in the sky, uh, and indeed you've got the combination of cirrus and cumulus creating cirrocumulus, one of the rarest forms of these main 10, I would have said. Also known as mackerel sky, you can see why. And in between medium level clouds, you just add the alto. Alto stratus, quite a grey sky, often a precursor to bad weather. Or alto cumulus can give you very nice sunsets. So those are the main cloud types, 10 in total. It's three minutes up, but I think we'll keep going. You can find out more from the International Cloud Atlas, including this wonderful diagram on their website. So it just goes to show that categorizes them into the different heights as well. So that you've got your stratus at the bottom, the cumulus. Cumulonimbus goes all the way up through the atmosphere. And then you've got your medium layers and your, uh, your cirrusy ones up the top. Yeah. Three minutes, 25 seconds. Happy cloud spotting. <laughs> Well, that was a pretty good first stab, I think, at a three-minute three minute Met. We'll do more of those. If you've got any ideas, in fact, for other suggestions for three-minute Met, then we will, um, we will cover them in future shows. But, uh, yeah, that was your three-minute cloud spotting guy. Obviously, there's many more categories within those categories. Uh, and maybe we'll cover those another day as well. Debbie Moore on Facebook, three-minute Met is a great idea. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> uh, conversely, William Tate on YouTube, three-minute Met is boring. <sighs> Sorry about outrageous. that, William. Well, you can't please all of the people all the time. <laughs> Sam Southall, did Aidan have a nice birthday? I did, thank you very much. I noticed there were lots of comments last week wishing me a happy birthday, so thank you for that. Stratus in Airdrie, this is what we want. Stratus in Airdrie, learning something new every day. Excellent, this, <laughs> this is good, this is good. Every day is a school day. You Brilliant. can always look outside and find something new high in the sky. Uh, right, so let's move on. And uh, what are we talking about? Piece talking of about climate the climate news. Yes, we talked about this on last week's show as well. We touched on it. The WMO um, released a big report. It was last Tuesday, but it was after the show. It was like in the evening, I think, the big news release, about half past five. Um, if you go to the WMO website, there's much more information on it there. But it was, it was the State of the Climate Report for 2019. And um, the, the main headlines from that was that last year, they'd done all the analysis, got all the data in from all the various different um, data sets of observing the temperatures around the globe and it was the second warmest year on record uh, after 2016 uh, part of cul the culmination of an exceptionally warm decade uh, those previous five years been the five the warmest five years on record combined as well so uh, it's a really interesting report it doesn't just focus on temperatures as well it talks a lot about uh, sea level rise ice melt and there's a really little a really nice little two minute video um, which which flags all the highlights again on the WMO website Sites. And one of the main things of that is that as things stand, we are not on track to reach the, the Paris target, the Paris Agreement uh, agreed five years ago, uh, where most UN countries signed up to reaching or keeping the global temperature rise below, well below two degrees by the end of the century, uh, and ideally below 1.5. And the, the main findings from the WMO was that we're not on track to reach that. So yes, I, I uh, urge you to go and look at the video uh, on the WMO website. There's lots more information on it there, but the Met Office obviously were part of that, um, that report as well. Chris A on YouTube, what are the thin wafty clouds that produce almost iridescent rainbow-like colours at super high atmospheric altitudes? I think that's the cirrus stratus, isn't it? The really thin, really high layers. Unless you're talking about the nacreous clouds, higher up. Could be, could be similar. They're going to be really high level clouds composed of ice to produce those kinds of atmospheric effects. So yeah, it could be nacreous, could be uh, cirrus stratus. Uh, yeah, lovely. You get all sorts of weird and wonderful effects from these really high layers of icy clouds because of what these individual ice crystals do to um, 
the uh, solar rays. Uh, a lot of people might be wondering, how long will the cold weather that we're getting at the end of the week last? And how long will the high pressure last? So let's take a look at just two slightly more technical diagrams Oof. to help explain that. So we've shown meteorograms on the uh, show before. This is the temperature graph for Hull, so somewhere oh, kind of central nice in the in UK. I thought we'd... Uh, Always beautiful. Always beautiful in Hull. And what you can see there, the days running along the x-axis, and you've got oh, the y-axis. All oh, get them mixed up. That's the x. That's the x. Right. <laughs> it goes out to 15 days essentially. The next two weeks, and it's the temperature trend. This is the y-axis temperature. Okay. On the y -axis. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, A-level maths came in handy. <laughs> uh, the red ones on the top. That's the daytime maximum temperature. The blue on the bottom. Those are the overnight low temperatures. And as you can see, they get bigger as you go ahead through the next two weeks because the uncertainty increases. Yeah, the size of the, the, size of the blob or the nodule uh, reflects the uncertainty. So the bigger that nodule is, the greater the uncertainty. So we're the, 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 they're quite small here because these are the next couple of days. We're pretty confident that temperatures are falling away. And then it's likely to get warmer, but there's greater uncertainty, particularly as we get into the middle of next week. But it's useful. It's a bit smaller. It's useful showing the trend yeah. during the next week or so, and also how confident we are about that trend. So, really high confidence for Friday's below average temperature. The red line there is the average temperature, and it's all below average. So, a cold day to come on Friday, frosty night follows. And then on Saturday, again, high confidence that Saturday will be a cold day. But look at the trend. Follow the average line there, the red line, and you can see by the start of next week, most of these boxes are above the average. So, sorry. That pen always falls pen, off, doesn't yeah. it? Pen issues. Um, so, it just goes to show that it, it is a relatively short-lived cold snap. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Interestingly, going back, and now we're looking at further ahead, but just to show that the, 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 the nodule for Thursday is larger than Friday. There's so more uncertainty about Thursday, and that goes back to the position of that front and the yeah. uncertainty within that. So it's, it's interesting that, you know, sometimes some people say, how do you know what the weather's doing at the weekend? Well, you don't know what it's doing tomorrow. Yeah. But that's, that's, that happens reasonably frequently. You get some element that just is quite, is quite uncertain, which will have a big impact on the temperature, which is why there's more uncertainty about Thursday than there is about Friday. Yeah, timing of the arrival of that cold weather, whether it arrives Thursday morning or by Friday. But yes, it looks like this cold spell for the rest of this week into the weekend, but then signs of it getting a bit milder next week. Yeah, and that's all to do with the position of an area of high pressure. So we saw how that high pressure builds in in cold out, drags in an easterly breeze, but then that high pressure reorientates. However, the important thing here is that the high pressure does stick around for, well, a long time. Again, we've got the date going along the x-axis here, right till the 31st of March is the last uh, column. And what you can see here is a lot of red on the map, and the red means anticyclonic conditions most likely. And we showed these uh, tables a few weeks ago, and it was all blue when we had just a run of low pressures. They were promising red colours towards the end. But now we've completely flipped. And it's essentially, you run the computer model many, many times, and the more computer models that suggest that we're going to see high pressure, the more red colour you get. And along that top roll, the, the, the most recent computer model runs just go out red, 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 red. Slight blip there because there's low pressure close to the southwest for the start of next week. But pretty much it's high pressure in charge to the end of March. That's what the it's strong signal is. You know, I can't recall ever seeing one as, as red as that. And literally four weeks ago on, we showed that and it was, it was literally all blue with one, one pink square in the top right hand yes, corner, wasn't it? Yeah, it's completely absolutely, flipped. absolutely remarkable that there's the rock solid agreement. Uh, but, you know, equally we had that red and it didn't quite, it kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. So these are not, these are not absolute definites, but they're strong signals from the, from the computer model. Very strong signals that pressure is likely to remain high for the rest of the month. Doesn't always mean warm, doesn't no. always mean sunny, doesn't always mean completely dry, but what it does indicate is that the weather just won't be quite as wet, as windy, and as um, impactful as it's been for the last few months. Hopefully the weather just a lot quieter for the rest of March. 
some good suggestions coming in for more three minute Met. Uh, thank you for those. Keep them coming in. Golf stream in three minutes, not necessarily a jet stream, perhaps. We could do a jet stream maybe in three minutes. Golf stream, not necessarily our, our bag, although we could, we could, I'm sure we could mm. find out about it. Um, what about an explanation of Hadley cells in three minutes? That's a good idea as well. Peter, thank you for Add that. To the do, list. do keep them coming in. Uh, Simon Hammett on Facebook. Good job, guys. Keep up the good work. Oh, thanks, Simon. Get well soon, mate. Uh, and Sam Fraser on YouTube. I just want to know whether Gloucestershire will get any snow if the high pressure and the cold air is in the UK. Not a lot of sign of, of much snow, Sam, sadly. It just looks like being cold and frosty. If you're after snow, yeah, there'll be a little bit across northern Scotland again tonight and tomorrow, but no huge amounts expected in Gloucestershire. Must be almost the two-year anniversary of the second Beast yeah, from the East. Yeah, it was March the 17th. It? Was it, was it yeah. today? Oh, there you yeah. go. So it's, it's two years since we had the second element of Beast from the East, but that's when we had a lot of moisture coming up from the south mm. as well. So it was the cold air and the moisture. At the moment, this cold air just looks like being pretty dry, dry. Yeah. Uh, and of course because it hasn't been so cold as well the ground isn't as cold so any snow that we do get across Scotland just isn't isn't sticking around either as well it's just been a very very different winter right I think that's about it is it make sure you stay tuned with the very latest uh, across social media we're still outputting uh, as best we can obviously these are, are difficult times we hope to be back next week yeah and but so, uh, well we just don't know I guess <laughs> I guess we Do don't we? know but uh, if you've liked it if you are a new viewer and you'd like to give us the thumbs up tell your friends about it as well we're here every Tuesday at one o'clock and uh, yes we will see you then next week bye bye